Okay, let's put the spotlight now on uh, the the auto space. Uh, the stocks were really revved up on Friday towards the end. Uh, there was a rally across the board, including four wheelers and two wheelers. So, what is the uh, the expectation going forward, and what are the fundamentals looking like? We have Jay Kale, executive vice president at Elara, joining in. Jay, thanks for uh, being with us. So, it's interesting, you know, the trends, the way they are playing out. It seems that there's so much buzz in two wheelers. The numbers have been good. There's so many new launches happening. There's talk about a rural pickup as well. Uh, but four wheeler volumes. The big question there is that whether you know volumes have hit a bit of a plateau. What's your sense? Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, so definitely two wheelers has held up quite well. Uh, we've seen uh, the entire FY24 and even uh, coming into a YTD FY25, the two wheeler retail volumes, if I have to look at, are in double digits uh, and are higher, tracking still higher than our full year growth estimate. Uh, of course, there is this hope of uh, rural recovery also coming back. Festive is something that uh, we need to keenly watch uh, because that's a very heavy weightage in terms of two wheeler volumes. Uh, so we are expecting close to a double-digit two-wheeler uh, growth in FY25, uh, which will be led by rural uh, coming back uh, while uh, urban continues to do uh, relatively better. That has not been the case uh, specifically for passenger vehicles, like you rightly mentioned. Of course, passenger vehicle volumes have been struggling. There has been, uh, you know, rising inventory levels at uh, dealers, and uh, you know, real. But you know, you also have to understand that uh, July August is relatively a weaker seasonal month for passenger vehicle industry volumes also. So it's not all lost uh, for the fiscal. Uh, you know, we have still have hopes that from the festive season uh, uh, volumes jumping back. It will be led by companies who have good model launches uh, and uh, refreshes uh, in their pipeline. But definitely, uh, two wheelers are expected to outperform passenger vehicles from a growth perspective going forward. All right, Jay, good morning and good to see you when you're sounding quite bullish on the two wheelers. Uh, let's uh, get a little bit into, uh, you know, some more detail out there. First, I wanted your view on Ola Electric. What have you made of this listing? Out of nowhere, the stock has moved up. So your view on that one. And since you're bullish on two wheelers, your top pick from there. Yeah, I think, see, Ola Electric, uh, you know, uh, it's still in early days, uh, both of listing as well as their operations. Uh, but uh, definitely a very good listing. Uh, debut that it has. One needs to see how, you know, when liquidity eases, how, uh, where and how and where the stock settles to. One also has to see the market share where it settles to because, you know, you will be having incumbents also ramping up their capacities. Uh, the start has been pretty good for Ola Electric in terms of market share as well. Uh, but one needs to see how that pans out uh, in a medium to long term perspective. Uh, and of course, their venture into the cells, uh, you know, how that stabilizes. I've mentioned that earlier as well. Uh, that uh, it's not easy to stabilize sales. We've seen that globally, especially with prices coming down. Uh, so what kind of cost advantage that actually gives to the uh, OEM, which, uh, you know, Ola has been speaking about, also needs to be closely watched. Uh, we currently don't have it, have it under coverage, so can't give my official view. But in the two-wheeler space, our top picks remain uh, Bajaj and TBS Motors. Mm. <clears throat> you know, uh, Ola, uh, Jay, hi, morning. Ola has a market cap of about 55,000 crores. Uh, maybe uh, many are on the street are a little surprised with the rally, uh, but have you heard queries on what this could what this valuation could mean for Hero and its 35% uh, share in Aether, uh, and and how that should be valued? Any any thoughts at all? I mean, have you uh, have you had have you thought about this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's, it's a uh, that's a natural rub off effect on the SOTP valuation that we give for. Uh, Aether within the hero. Of course, it has 43% uh, stake in uh, Aether. Uh, now, that obviously increases, you know, of course, with, uh, with the stock price of uh, Ula almost doubling. Uh, the valuation that we were giving inherently uh, into Aether, that at least for the moment uh, increases substantially. Uh, but really, one, like I mentioned earlier, one needs to see where, that's, where this valuation settles uh, for Ula. And in that context, what uh, Ether comes out in terms of absolute uh, actual valuation uh, on the listing side. Uh, so it will be a little bit of volatility uh, going forward, uh, but definitely, you know, from a uh, SOTP perspective, it rubs off well on Hero for the uh, uh, short term. Mm, okay, so that's on the the two wheeler space. Uh, you know, Jay. Before we wind up. On, uh, on PVs, if someone wants to be a contrarian and wants to, you know, uh, be uh, be looking at the longer term picture or the medium term picture, then uh, any specific stock that you will go with, I mean, should one stay with m and given, you know, the, the strengths that they have in terms of market share and also throw in a word on Tata Motors because there's so much going on. 
I think over the last couple of days, they also released this new tax calculator because they'll be cancelling the ordinary shares and there's a restructuring, there's an eventual demerger. So just a word of advice there as well. Yeah, I mean, I think m &M has been, uh, uh, you know, has, has had a stellar run despite the big uh, industry volumes. Uh, their volume growth has been in double digits and uh, market share increase uh, we've seen. So that should be, you know, till this volume growth and market share continues, I think that uh, m &M should uh, remain in, uh, in, in good stead. And Tata Motors specifically, our view, you know, on the India PV and India CV business, of course, it's largely stable. India CV, uh, we don't have a particularly very favorable view on the CV cycle. But I think Tata Motors more so, uh, our view is positive, uh, mainly led by uh, JLR. Uh, over there, we see that the uh, margins as well as profitability uh, and the mix impact uh, that JLR has seen is giving them healthy return ratios of 20% plus. Uh, and we see no reason why that should not lead to a re-rating within the JLR portfolio uh, versus its peers like uh, Porsche. Uh, so uh, we see some bit of valuation re-rating upside potential for JLR given its mix and uh, margin profile moving up as well as ROCs with 20% plus. And that's why we would be bullish on Tata Motors as well. All right, Jay, I appreciate you joining in. Thanks a lot uh, for giving us your comments. Wishing you a good Monday ahead and we look forward to hearing from you in the time to come.